what's going on guys i'm chris and this is regular guy training and with me i have travis um he's one of those fucking dudes i just cannot get rid of uh he started as he he started as a student with us and that kind of stuff and over and over time you know he, he started to make his way behind the line and that kind of stuff a lot of you guys notice him especially in the pistol classes especially when he walks by and makes that comment that makes you hate yourself <laughs> <laughs> don't do it on purpose uh -huh. oh, so, to you, I do. But to students, I don't so, do it on purpose. So anyhow, uh, <laughs> we're here doing the extended review on the Emperor Scorpion. Uh, you guys saw uh, the initial review of it and that kind of stuff. I shot a bunch of rounds through it. Um, that had a, uh, a, a, a bunch of shooting in A class through it. Uh, a a two-day, 1,400-round class. Yeah, the performance then, class. Yeah, uh, that went through performance pistol. And uh, I shot a bunch of rounds through it. And then since then... Um, it's kind of weird because in our in our pistol classes and that kind of stuff, you know, like look, we we thoroughly get it. The striker fired handguns are you know more reliable, more capacity, and that kind of stuff. We have an irrational attachment to an arc to an archaic handgun design. Get the fuck over it. They shoot flat and triggered lie to us about our abilities. So, yeah, but but real talk though, if you show up with a stock Glock 19, where I'm outgunned, like by, by a lot, by a lot. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, so, but we we still have like like we'll we'll show up and. Uh, We'll, we'll even tell students, like, yeah, we're being a bunch of gays today. You know, I've got, we both have 1911s and that kind of stuff, and we'll proceed to, you know, do demos with them and that kind of stuff. Uh, are they capable of self-defense stuff and, you know, concealed carry, home defense, all that stuff? Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah. But uh, if it's in 45, a Glock 21 is going to do the job way better. And if you're not a stickler on caliber, a Glock 17 or 19 is going to do the job better or so pretty much just yeah we, we have an irrational attachment let's say <laughs> let's, let's understand that really fast so point is though is that this guy's got about uh, actually a little over nine thousand rounds to it just a fuss uh between you know factory loaded ammunition as well as uh, a bunch of reloading you've done and that kind of stuff for it yeah uh because jacketed you, bullets cast bullets plated yeah. it's, it's eight them all yeah because so. you decided because you decided to shoot 45 for like a year straight and yeah. reloading was pretty much the only way that you were going pretty to much it was either get good or go broke yeah so, so. A, a lot of that a lot of that happened uh point is though is that you know we got it out here and we decided you know hey it's 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 approaching a fairly high round count especially for a production 1911 like one that you can just grab off the shelf that's done off of factory tooling and that kind of stuff oh, a lot of steel ammo too uh, put that in there yeah there's ass loads of tula that went and wolf. Thing also. yeah all of it yeah tula so. wolf uh, a bunch of reloads and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff uh, very rarely have I actually seen you with factory produced brass case ammo. It's because this shit's expensive. I've seen you with service grade. Yeah, that was that was the performance class. I had two thousand rounds of Winchester. There's service a point grade. to all this, but I had a, I had a thousand. I had two thousand rounds of Winchester service grade. Okay, that's a that and a little bit of S and B is pretty much all the factory that's been through it. Okay, so so there you go. Um, so between uh, factory loadings with both steel cased ammo and brass cased ammo, um, comparatively speaking, not all that much, but it does it does take a sizable portion of the nine of the nine thousand plus thousand rounds through it. Yeah, about a third of it. Yeah, so uh, it does take a sizable portion of it, a uh, bunch of reloads, and a bunch of Wolf and Tula. Mm -hmm. Right. So after all that, how did this thing do? Well, um, I'm actually very pleased with it. Now, it didn't make it completely unscathed and that kind of stuff. Um, we did have a couple of issues. Uh, today, the tritium vial in it decided it was going to try and walk out on us. This actually got uh, padded back in there by a Wilson Combat magazine. Um, as far as reliability and that kind of stuff is concerned, too. Uh, after this long, uh, especially if you start to see fanning, ejection, and that, and that uh, we, you know, you might want to do a specific test that lets you know whether or not a part's getting ready to go to go out. Meaning, you know, if, if it's starting to fan and it's ejection pretty hard, you might want to do this test. All right. So in about nine thousand rounds, there's a test that that we want to do, right? To basically see what's going on with the external extractor on this thing, because a lot of people are going to debate about internal or external extractors and that kind of stuff, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that have reasons for getting an internal extractor or an external extractor. Uh, but a lot of times, especially on a lot of like production parts, for instance, um, there's an almost regular tune-up time. For instance, my Dan Weston Specialist in 9mm, uh, when I do the extended review on that, because it's at 11,000 rounds right now, I'm going to cross over to 12 before I go ahead and do the review on it, uh, the extended review on it. Um, that's been tuned twice. 
once every 5,000 rounds, right? Um, and I don't think I'm going to tune in a third time. I think I'm going to replace that part versus an external extractor, which is just held in with a pin and there's a spring that, uh, that puts the opposite tension on it or puts the tension on it so it grips on the case head. So at about, around about 9,000 rounds, this part hasn't been cha uh, changed out at all. And the reason why this test is significant is because unlike your striker-fired pistols and that kind of stuff, um, for instance, the, a striker-fired pistol uh, sort of depends on the magazine uh, to, to assist with the, ex with the ejection process to where if you take a healthy uh, striker fire 9 millimeter handgun, limp wrist it, pull a magazine out and take a shot, the casing is likely going to get stuck here or fall straight out the bottom. But that's a brand new pistol or one that works perfectly fine, right? Uh, it's sort of dependent on having a magazine inserted in order to, you know, assist with that uh, ejection process. This, the 1911, is an independent uh, extraction and ejection process, so a good test for it, actually there's a couple, but a good test for it uh, by firing live rounds is to simply pull the magazine out of it, make sure it's got a round in the chamber. Uh, and then you limp wrist it super hard uh, to just kind of force it to do its own thing. Now, if the casings get out of the gun for an entire magazine, that's just fine. If it fails once in that magazine, you can tell that it's starting to get weaker. Here's another thing. As far as testing brand new handguns and that kind of stuff, as I said in the previous review, um, break-in periods on handguns, especially handguns that a lot of people would view as like a home defense, a duty, or a concealed carry handgun, is absolute horseshit. Unless it's specifically made to run matches and that kind of thing to where you want those ultra-tight tolerances and that kind of stuff. Uh, and, you know, like hand-picked loadings and that kind of stuff for it. Uh, it's absolute horseshit. It needs to run well out of the box, and this is one of those tests that you can do when it's brand new. And, like, let's say that you're at a class or something and you get, like, a couple of weird stovepipes and you know that it's not really shitty outside to where it can't really be, like, a magazine issue or something like that. Uh, you might run run that test just to see if that part needs to go or be tuned or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and run that test now. Okay, magazine isn't inserted. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to limp wrist the shit out of this handgun like I'm trying to take out tigers and shit. And we'll see what happens. Look at that. Okay, so that's one. Let's see what kind of shape this thing is in. I'm going to go through all eight. Two. Oh, God. Put that in my pocket, not my pouch. one made it. That one did not. Okay, so two out of eight tells me the part's starting to get weaker. Now, the fact that we're on 9,000 rounds before having to do this, uh, to me, is, act is actually pretty satisfactory as far as the longevity of that individual part. Again, 1911s have 1911 problems. It's not like a Glock 17 that would go like 25,000 rounds before you got to change anything out. Um, uh, it's usually shorter than that, but you get what I'm saying. Um with this particular handgun it lasting as long as it has and still being able to go through a magazine without having any problems, you know, just in a traditional manner, uh, having tested it this way, it's like, okay, cool. We can head that problem off and change that the spring out on the extractor before we run into actual issues that stop the gun a whole lot of times and get people uh, and keep people from quoting two World Wars memes and shit like that. Because if you just take a regular, uh, regular live magazine, you have a magazine on you? Hold on, because if you just stick a regular eight round magazine in here 
and keep it in there, you won't notice the issue because you can go straight to Instagram town. See what I'm saying? So it's a significant test to put on something like this, especially if you plan on shooting 1911s a lot. Now, your handgun has good tension on the extractor and good timing with the ejection and recoil spring and all that stuff. If it can successfully go through this test uh, with at least a magazine, right? So here's what I'm going to do, right? Okay, just gonna just gonna very simply limp wrist the pistol, get it out there. This is about as weak as I can grip the pistol. Okay, get it out there and fire a shot at a time. Okay, made that one. Two. Good deal. Eight again. Okay. Yeah, so you guys saw, you know, it's failing pretty hard at that, right? But for a production 1911, um, a little over 9,000 rounds, it's actually pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, and let's let's not cut ourselves. You know that that uh, that spring in that extractor is cooked. It it's it's ready to be replaced. It's it should have been replaced. I mean, I've been before hit, now, but I've been hit in the face by fucking brass case trash cans today. Oh yeah, uh, just winging and, dumpsters everywhere. And that's me behind the gun. Uh, so you know, for that right, because I I mentioned the internal extractor on my Dan Wesson that's been tuned twice, about every five thousand rounds, right. For 1911, for, you know, the, the guys that just grew up on the more modern tools and that kind of stuff, that doesn't sound like a lot. That's because it's not. As far as 1911s and that kind of stuff is concerned, you, you start to figure out more or less a maintenance schedule. Uh, so replacing this is actually not really that big of a deal because unlike an internal extractor on uh, government-style 1911, uh, this is not internal, it's external. So roll pin gets punched. You pull the whole part out, replace the spring, and I don't know if you're gonna replace the extractor tooth on it too, but I might just go ahead and do it. Yeah, just you know, get get in front of it. Um, so we talked about those two things. Uh, the next thing too is that you decided that you were gonna replace the entire safety plunger. That would be this guy that this rides on, right? Yeah. You're gonna replace the entire safety plunger because it was starting to wiggle on you. So you, from my knowledge, you replaced the whole damn thing and staked it right. Yeah, it's just simply swaged to the frame. They're not welded in, pinned in, screwed in. It's just two hollow tubes go through the frame. They swage out, and that's it. So once those start to loosen up, you're not going to get them back. So I just put a new one in it. Okay, so as yeah. um, far as that kind of stuff is concerned, especially when 45s do 45 things, and especially, like, it, it's the volume that we shoot to. Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah, volume definitely is a factor. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to classes, like, um, for a string of four days, right? Especially, Jesus Christ, especially if it's a pistol class. And we'll leave with like a thousand rounds from the house and come back with like a couple of mags. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, because we'll, we'll do demos, we'll do demos together. There are a lot of reps and there's a lot of concepts that we cover. And not so, to mention if we loan it out to somebody, if their stuff goes down, we will loan them out too. So. Yeah, because we, we've had guns go down before and like, what was it? Some dude's Glock decided that it was going to shit the bed or whatever and you hit and. It, I, I had a great laugh because he handed him a 1911 so he could finish the damn class with a gun that worked. It's so yeah. backward. <laughs> um, he looked uh, insulted. If you, uh, you know who you are. Like, you, you, can, you, you can out yourself. Like, but. like his face is... He's like, what the fuck did I do with this grandpa piece of shit? I was like, fucking shoot the drills. Uh, like, you know, and he did too. He champed. He chiefed it, man. He did it. Yeah, yeah. and the funny thing is too, he's like, I'm going to buy one of these. I'm like, whoa, stop. <laughs> That's a terrible Don't idea. Don't do that. That's no. such a bad idea. Uh, and he's like, wow, how much does this cost? Way more than you'd pay for right now, dude. Yeah. 
because uh, what was what was the cost of this again? When I bought it, the prices have changed, so don't fucking freak out. But it was twelve fifty when I bought it. Okay. I don't know how long they've been on the market, but they were, they were still selling the regular Scorpion. This is the Emperor Scorpion. They were selling both. They aren't selling the regular Scorpions now, but it was twelve fifty when I bought it. Yeah. So uh, a twelve hundred dollar handgun, right? And so it is what it is. Um, as far as what went down with that Glock, I, I don't even fucking remember anymore. Like we have so many guns die on us. Like, like it, sample size of ten billion, dude. I have no idea. Point is though, it is wasn't that, a catastrophic failure, but it was enough to keep it from running. So I. I think, no, I think his front sight ejected, and he didn't have a replacement. Probably. And he was only other 45 in the class. That's what that was. Aha. Yeah. Yeah. It was, okay. a, it was yeah, a Glock 21. Yeah. And he didn't lock tight that thing down. Anyway, tangent. So, point is, though, is that this thing tends to just hang right in there. Mm -hmm. um, now, depending on environments and that kind of stuff, uh, I gauge whether or not a uh, gun starts to suffer on the reliability side of the house when guns similar to it would be doing much better, right? So, for instance, in, like, a, a, an environment that's got a lot of clay or gravel or, like, uh, Florida sugar sand, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, if this gun started to go down, for instance, in Florida with all that sugar sand where all the guns were going down, I wasn't really going to... I, I'd report it for sure here, um, but I wouldn't count it really against the pistol if everybody's gun's going down. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that this actually did pretty good because, you know, open side magazines and it was sugar sand, mostly dry out there. It rained on us a couple times, so you shake the fuckers free. And it, it actually started to do better than some Glocks that we were just talking yeah. about, like, the maddest shit in the world. Point is, though, is that it hung right in there uh, with the other striker fired guns and that kind of stuff. Now, Even in Kentucky, because I live in Kentucky, you're in Tennessee, but Kentucky's got that red clay, which basically operates like glue once mm -hmm. it starts to dry up a little bit. And... Um, I, it still works. I mean, it's it had it, that hasn't caused it to choke. Yeah. It's killed magazines, but it hasn't caused it to choke. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen stuff in the gun too, um, but it just kind of moves it out of the way once a couple of reloads get done, that kind of thing. Now we did have problems with magazines. Uh, for instance, uh, you have a set of Chip McCormick ten round magazines, mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't mean like one or two. It's a set of like ten round mags, and those did not like any adversity whatsoever. There's still a bunch of sand in them uh, now, and I think you just didn't clean them because you're like, fuck it. I just haven't. <laughs> yeah. I haven't really fucked with them a whole lot. Um, I just I loaded, loaded them to 10 today to do the shoot we were doing, and you'll probably see them in some of the footage, but... Probably. I, I, I'm not sure if they did or not. Base but, plates were seized up at the bottom, so yeah. I just fucking screw them. Point is, though, is that uh, I, I don't believe they're in the footage, but point is, though, is that they were giving us problems, right? Uh, and if you change out magazines and the gun isn't working and then you replace them with different magazines and the gun works, okay, cool. But, you know, a stoppage is a stoppage, so there you go. Yeah. Um, it did not like the Chip McCormick 10-round um, uh, magazines at all. Um, and it's the real power mags, the RPMs, the good ones, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. So, and and then you have, like, the factory magazines for this and, like, 8,000 Wilson Combat mags. Yeah. So, once we went down to the 8-round magazines, we had no issues really at all. So there's that. Um, I mean, really, that that's it. You know, Tridium tried to walk because of 45 stuff. The plunger tube tried to walk because, because of 45, 45 stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, um, grip panels loosened up. Well, that's because I never tightened them when I first got it. I never locked tightened them down. Okay, so that's your fault. Yeah, that was me. Um, yeah, I thought that they just came loose on their own. Uh, so. Yeah. As far as yeah, as far as it. like oh, and and the extractors trying to die. Yeah, it's toast, but that's maintenance. Yeah, it's weird. Um, maintenance schedule is going to be a lot more than that of a striker fired gun, anyway. But as far as the actual firearm itself and stuff on it not working, that's pretty much it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of things that I personally noticed uh, on this handgun. Um, it's kind of sharp. Uh, this e port, for instance, will cut the dog shit out of you, dude. Like it, like if you wrap your hands up on it and, and do something, like especially if you're left-handed, and you and you catch that palm just right, it'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, um, I've almost had to have stitches before. I don't think I have the mark anymore, but I've I've gotten some good meat in there before. It's not fun. Yeah. Uh, also, over time, I started to really not like that grip safety because it's stout and very square. I've never noticed a problem with it. I don't, I've never noticed Well, you're that. not a walking coat hanger either. No, I got Viking fingers too, so I can manipulate it just fine. But. Yeah, when you're a walking coat hanger like me, man, you start to feel that shit, especially right 
in there. You start to feel it pretty good because you start to feel that, you know, because it, it's it's a larger, uh, well, it feels larger anyway. Oh, um, it's significant. It's bigger. It's it it's it's a larger feeling at least. Mm -hmm. uh, grip safety. So you really start to feel it, especially if you got like snappier loads in there. Because holy shit, by the way, as far as reliability is concerned, you decided that you were going to throw like the widest mouth fucking jacket hollow points ever. Oh yeah, it was Rainier's plated hollow points and I put them on power pistol powder, which is like, basically it was a fucking handheld howitzer. Dude, it, 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 it didn't make booming or popping sounds. It bapped. Yeah. You know, and it would fling casings like, god damn, like 20 yards? Oh yeah, man. Almost. Like, it, a long ways. Okay. Um... But, it hurt to get hit by them. I know that. Well, we we would watch just the difference between like Tula and that, and it was a joke. They would snap <laughs> hard in the hands. Hear them cutting through the air as they fly. Yeah. So when I shot those, I felt them. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you you could say, "Oh, you're a bitch," all you want, but if you're put doing like point two five splits on ammo like that, you'll feel it after a couple hundred rounds. Uh, so, but that is what it is. Uh, but even, and that's the thing, a lot of 1911s have trouble with jacketed hollow points, and that's actually the reason why you loaded what you did. Mm -hmm, that's well, exactly well, why. What was it, like a thousand rounds of that crap? Uh, there was 500 of them. Okay, my Thank bad. the gods. Yeah, five, <laughs> it was 500, and it took us forever uh, to it's... get through. Like, we decided to bang through, like, 300 of it in a day, and I shot 200 of them because I'm an idiot. Yeah. Um, but, point is, though, is that, uh... It made it. It actually did just fine. It didn't choke on any of those goddamn things. Um, and I don't see that often. What I do see often is I see 1911, a lot of 1911s, especially a lot of uh, uh, production 1911s, yeah. just absolutely not do jacketed hollow points. And these, were, th these weren't like, you know, your federal HSTs that are rolled forward a little bit. So they can get into feed ramps and, and get fed. No, these were like, these had like almost teeth on them. Yeah, they were very conical. Now, they were very wide. They weren't like that kind. They were a little bit less conical than that, but they were, they were significantly open. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Not like, yeah, nothing absolutely insane like rip ammunition or anything oh, like God, that. God, no. Well, but... first of all, it's because you like your barrel. Yeah, I do. Um, but... It handled them just fine, you know, and a lot of guys were like, oh, they're not designed for jacket and hollow points. Don't feed them in there. And you're right. You're right. <laughs> but we wanted, to, we, wanted to, we wanted to see if fire was hot. Yeah. Uh, turns out it wasn't this time. It wasn't as hot. It was still warm. <laughs> uh, but they well, don't like HSTs, I'll tell you that. You'll still have problems with HSTs. Uh, okay. So actually, so, I, I didn't know that. So, yeah. okay. So there you go. So it handled those, but it didn't like HSTs. It, it, it'll feed them. It's just very... <laughs> You know, oh, uh, sluggish. Uh, yeah, slug. it's it's one of those where you think, ah, I'm not gonna try that one. Yeah. See, <laughs> so, he's, he's he's shot more yeah. of this pistol than you're, I you're have. You're pretty so. much stuck with your critical duties. You know, stick with your 220 critical duties. Yeah. So, so. that's why he's here, really, is because he shot more of this pistol than I have. Yeah. Um, I picked it up and shot it. Like we've traded between nine and 45, uh, a lot of times to you know demo what a good grip actually looks like on a handgun, so we can track it flat and that kind of stuff. Point is, though, is that um. Uh, especially for a damn production gun, this thing has actually done really well. It's deceptive. Um, um, it makes me it's also wonder if I got a fluke. <laughs> it, it also feels fairly smooth, too. Uh, because there are a lot of 1911s out there, especially like budget guns. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you shot them, too. Oh, yeah. That are just... Like, you ever meet somebody that's like, Hey, man, you should try my 1911. It shoots really smooth. And you fire that thing once, and you're like, No! <laughs> no, it's not! Like... You didn't even bring your hands back down with them. It's just like, bat. No, nah, dude. It's not flat. It's not flat at all. Um, yeah, it feels like sliding on gravel every time you rack the slide. You know, almost like shooting like three fifty seven SIG or something. It's very snappy for no reason. Oh, yeah. Because forty five doesn't, it, for a well-built forty five anyway, forty five doesn't have a, a whole lot of snap to it. It's more ker-chunk. You know, if you have that loopy feeling in there, it doesn't even really, like... You don't even really feel like a much greater impulse. It's just loopier, mm -hmm. you know. That, that that good low pressure cycle with heavier components and that kind of stuff. So um, I don't know if that made any sense to everybody out there. But for this, and again, I hate to beat this point to death, but for a gun that's straight off the shelf, and most of the time, 1911 straight off the shelf are garbage, especially when you start to try and do what we're trying to do, um, which is shoot a lot and often. Um. They don't. They don't do so well. 
Uh, I've seen, and we can get into all manner of things that I've seen happen to them, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah. So, it's been reliable. It stays accurate. Um, it just stays accurate. Sites haven't walked. No, the sites haven't moved at all, which has um, surprised me. The tritium vial tried to eject, but the sites haven't walked at all. They're still, they're still damn there. straight. Yeah, they're still there, not walking or nothing. Uh, and if you don't fuck it up, you know it'll mask it'll mask your mostly ass shooting. Oh yeah, the enough. gun's way more accurate than anybody shooting it can be. Like and uh, it's it's maintained that it's. I mean, because we got some stupid hits with this thing in distances too, and it's, oh, yeah. it's mostly because the trigger helps you cheat, like every other nineteen eleven ever, like. You got a hit out there, actually on this range, out to 200. It was like on the fourth round or something like that. Yeah, and I was using those hand howitzer loads too, so <laughs> they got there a little quicker, but yeah. I mean, um, yeah, had to hold about two dudes high on it, but I got it. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I've shot fairly, fairly far, fairly far with it too. Um, you know, like a football field plus with it, and it does its job. Uh, it takes all day to get there, like every other 45, because subsonic and blah blah blah. But it. You know, it, it's accurate. It's, and again, especially for what it is, it's been very reliable. Um, not too many 1911 things that we've had to deal with, really. Uh, but at this point, it's at the point where something is starting to break, which is why we're doing the extended review right here and now. Yeah. Um, realistically speaking, um, there are not a whole lot of 1911s that I could sit there and be all like, you know what, that's a good first step. Because it goes from zero to retarded as fuck expensive really fast. And this is still really expensive for an auto-loading pistol, especially in today's market. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's it's still going to... It's going to do 1911 things and cost you a lot of money. It's going to. Um, but as far as a first 1911 or something, I, I have to recommend them. Um, it's going to do 45 things. Yeah, it's not... It, it's not it's not government profile. It's got a very sig boxy frame on it. Yes, it does. Which is a pain in the dick for holster. It is. I wanted to talk about that. Somebody actually on Facebook, um, the Facebook page, I answered your question, um, asked about holsters. Other than Safari Land, what you know holsters does anybody recommend for? I think it was a sig tac ops is what he had. Yep. And I told him if it has that square boxy frame, find somebody who does good work and makes them custom, and then give them your gun with a light on it and have them make you one. It's here's the thing too on a lot of Kydex holsters and that kind of stuff. Not, I, I can't even really say a lot, but you'll have to if you already have 1911 holsters and you want to try them out. I would try loosening up the tension on them. It's still pretty tight. Like if you see in the shoot footage, I'm drawing with a lot of force and then having to slam on the brakes while coming up on target so I don't overshoot and miss everything. But it's a tier one concealed holster and it's loosened up to to deal with it and. You can tell it's tight, but it's in there, right? But it's in there, and it'll get you by until you get a get a well-made holster for it, because yeah. that's the, 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 something like that with regular government profile is not designed to handle something like that, and there's no amount of loosening up that you could do that would make it feel not tight, and that's just because how the damn thing is cut, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can get away with some things, but not everything. No. Uh, so there's all that really. But you know, aside of um aside of some little quirks here and there and a couple of personal preferences individually, this thing has done very well. Yeah, it's surprising. This thing, done, this thing has done very well. I, I had expected more on this thing to break and I'd still be ple pleased with it at this point. Um but the fact that it has just kind of done whatever the fuck we wanted it to, mm -hmm. really, uh and didn't complain about it like almost all production 1911s would. <laughs> yeah, they will. Um, you know, especially if it's something terrible, you know, like Rock Island, Kimber, yeah. fucking Taurus. Well, what is it not? It's not a Rock Island. It's not a Citadel. It's not a Kimber. It's not a Taurus. Mm -hmm. But what else is it not? It's not a Nighthawk. It's not a Wilson. Yeah. You know, those are two great-ass 1911s. It's mm -hmm. not quite there, but it's a hell of a start. I mean, so he here's how I would personally grade it, right? Um... The bottom, that's acceptable, right? Yeah, not, yeah. not the bottom floor, no. but the bottom that's acceptable. You know, like motherfuckers you've let in the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it, to me, it would start with this. Yeah. The next level up, you know, you go to something like a Dan Wesson, and then from there, now we're in custom pistol territory. 
Like that's basically where I would rate it, and I think you're fairly similar. And in, in oh yeah, in that opinion, definitely. It's, like I said, it's a great starting 1911. Mm-hmm. I don't recommend anybody start off with a Taurus or anything on that level. Even the Ruger SR 1911s, they're not good. Yeah, you will spend more money fixing that pistol than the pistol is worth. Yeah, literally. And it it those handguns are are exploding memes. Okay. So no, no, I, I like I don't give a fuck if you if if this is a comment right now. Yeah, I'm sure your whatever it is has 4.8 million rounds on it. I got it. That's not how most of them are. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not how most Rock Islands are. No one has ever said that about a Kimber out of the box ever, because it's not the case. This didn't have a break-in period, which means. Again, it's 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 like the salad at a steak place, man. If the salad at a steak place is bad, you know how the rest of this day is gonna go. Yeah, you know. Um, but so, typically, though, if you're watching this video or something like that, you're either looking at one or you have one, or you're just like, "Fuck it, I like how they look," and you just want to see some asshole shoot it. That's okay. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's still a 1911. You're still gonna have to buy. Single-use items you'll use three times in the entire life of that pistol that will cost you probably somewhere around 50 bucks. Yep. You know, you're going to have, as you've already seen, a lot of fucking magazines. Mm -hmm. I almost have as much money in magazines as I do the price of that gun. That's not surprising. So. So, there it is. I mean, over the course of its life, it's been, it, it, it has done very well for, especially for what it is. Oh, yeah. And it's not showing signs of performing poorly other than stuff that needs replaced on a maintenance schedule it, it has not showed me anything that concerns me about it being a dead gun here anytime soon so yeah i mean it, it, it's it's a frame you can work off of mm-hmm. and that's that doesn't sound like a lot to ask but for a design as old as it is running it really hard that's actually something to be pretty pleased about is that it's a frame that you can work off of and you can keep up the maintenance on so that it continues to do its job so i mean i think i, I think that's a period on that one yeah, that's all i got yeah so if you want to come out and train with us you absolutely can uh especially if you especially if you want to see uh a couple of gays pull out some 1911s and do 1911 stuff uh and and don't worry we still we still teach with the striker fire guns okay oh, yeah we do uh all the time actually we just Every once in a while, we get a wild hair up our ass, and there was, like, <laughs> there was like there was like a three month span where there was at least one day that we busted these things out and used them. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But realistically speaking, we're not going to sit here and, and tell you a bunch of fud shit like two world wars and all kinds. of I things. mean, I'm absolutely going to make those jokes. I'm going to make those jokes the whole time. Yeah, but there's a difference between jokes and belief. I'm going to. Yeah. But, jokes and belief are two yeah, different things. Are. This is YouTube you're talking to. <laughs> okay. Somebody's gonna. Somebody just lost his mind, and he just now stopped typing, trying to figure <laughs> out. Yeah, exactly. You see what I mean? Shit down both pant legs and up his back. Man, Jesus. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you want to shoot it, bring some ammo, and I'll let you shoot it. You, I, I'd offer you some of mine, but the shit's fucking expensive. So. It is. So it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's all we really have. It's done very well, uh, especially for what it is. For those of you that have them, you know, you got a solid piece. Um, for those of you that are that are looking for a, a jumping point, and are trying to not get spend like seventeen hundred dollars to start on a handgun, and that's a Dan Wesson mm-hmm. all goddamn day, especially the black ones. Um, this is an option, you know. If if you could buy one of these things, what was it twelve hundred dollars off a website? You could probably get them a little bit cheaper if they're used or whatever. Yeah, street price. You're probably looking around a grand right now. Yeah. So. That's what we have on this particular handgun. If you guys want to come out and train with us, if you want to check out the Facebook page and that kind of stuff, if you know, if you want to support us through Patreon, and some of you take advantage of the thirty-five dollar a month program where you come out, where you sign up to that thing, you can come out and train as much as you want. Um, so long as you're signed up to that, it's as simple as I'm signed up to it. Send dude an email. I'll verify that email. Make sure you use the same email as the one that you used in the Patreon link, uh, or on your Patreon account. So I can verify you, and then cool, you're on a roster as long as I have a slot. And that's how that goes. You know, It's a way for you to train as often as possible without as much upfront cost. That's the point. Uh, so, you know, or you can buy a hat from us. I sell hats. 
Links for all this bullshit are in the, are in the description below. I'm going to quit trying to plug myself. And remember, the regular guy's firearm is the last defense against Tyrion. Yeah.